Dear friends, now it is time to start our Dhamma sermon. We are in Dhammapada Stensa number 194. Sukho Buddha Nang Upadho Sukha Saddhamma Dejana Sukha Sanghasa Samaggi Samagga Nang Tapo Sukho. Brief meaning of this stensa is Happy is the birth of Buddhas. Happy is the teachings of the sublime Dhamma. Happy is the unity of the Sangha. Happy is the disciplines of the united ones. This is the best time to discuss about these happy things. Because now we are celebrating Buddha's birthday. It was on last full moon day, May 26th was the Buddha's birthday. Happy is the birth of the Buddhas. Make a question yourself, how? How it can make happiness the birth of the Buddha for you? This is very important questions that we should arise ourselves. And you can think using this opportunity into deep level. What, why, how it's come? How it is helpful to make happy yourself? The Buddha's birth. What does it mean? Dear friends, I have been mentioning this special things. The Buddha is the role model for human humans. The Buddha is the role model. The Buddhahood is not something happening out of this human world. As you know, Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, born into this human world as a human baby. King Siddhodana and Maya, Mahamaya, was the parents of Prince Siddhartha. And Prince Siddhartha grew up this, in this society with other human beings. He end up his lay life and then he joined again with another group of human beings who are practicing to attain enlightenment. Prince Siddhartha born under a tree. Prince Siddhartha, Prince uh, ascetic Siddhartha attained enlightenment under a tree. The Buddha passed away under a tree. All these significant things, significant event in his life happened in this human world, same as other human beings. There were some miracles happened because, because of the merits that Buddha had. But generally we know the Buddha was a human being who lived in this human world. Then, what is that Buddhahood? Realizing the Buddhahood, we can understand why this say, happy is the birth of Buddha. We can understand it. First, we have to understand what is Buddhahood means. Buddhahood means not something else. It is the superb level that human beings can achieve, accomplish. What is the difference? This human life and that human life. There are so many achievements with that life. What are those? 
he already established his happiness. We have happiness, but only for a short time. In this moment, participate in this med meditation and uh, Dhamma session. You completely away from your day-to-day -day life, day-to-day -day routines. So you don't have worries, you don't have troubles, you don't have anger, you don't have any other upset thoughts, confuse things in your mind. Why you are focusing on Dhamma? So you are free from suffering now for the moment. Your happiness is with you now. Your compassion also here with you now. Your sympathetic joy and equanimity, every, every these qualities are with you now. But we don't know when, how it would be changed. Within in one nanosecond, it's subject to change, right? This happiness remain with defilements. Still this happiness remain with defilements. There are defilements in your thoughts, in your mind. So those defilements are not allowing to domain this happiness, to establish this happiness. Therefore, each and every moment might be tiny things can change the happiness that you are enjoying in this moment. So attaining enlightenment himself, the Buddha was able to establish his happiness. This is the highest things that you can achieve as human beings. This is the highest. The Buddha spending numerous time in his previous life and even the last birth, practicing and practicing, was able to realize the truth. Realizing that truth, then he started to deliver that Dhamma. Within in 45 years, 45 years of period of time, he had been given 84,000 sermons, Dhamma sermons, to explain this realization, to explain the path for this realization, to explain his wisdom, how we can gain that is wisdom. 84,000 Dhamma sermons are there. Now you can see how many hours that Buddha used for himself. 45 divided into 84,000. At least five Dhamma sermons had given by the Buddha per day, at least five. Some discourses are very long. Even to just chant that discourses, you need four hours, five hours in the Gnikai long leg discourses to just chant. So generally we know to chant some discourses, it takes one hour. This is general. Then you can see after enlightenment, Sakyamuni Buddha, Gautama Buddha, he sacrificed everything. Two hours per day, he got to relax himself mid of night. You know, any, any other time period that he spent, definitely he spent that time benefit for someone else. Now you can see how compassionate mind the Buddha maintained because of the Buddha. We are able to see 
we are able to see our mind, what kind of thoughts are arising in our mind. What is the nature of our mind? How we can gain our happiness? All these matters that we have, we can find answer through the Buddha's teaching. We all are working for our happiness. Morning to evening, even to morning, 24 7, we are searching our happiness. This is our goal. Is there any other philosopher? Is there any other religious leader? Is there any other scholar who declared the path? for our happiness, for our liberation. No. Compare, no one can compare with the Buddha because the Buddha's explanation, clean and clear, path is direct. There is no any doubt. If someone can apply the method that delivered by the Buddha, explained by the Buddha, Yes, exactly, they can attain that happiness. They can gain that happiness. They can establish happiness. They can liberate from suffering. This is the nature that, this nature had been explained in Dhamma Vandana. When we worship into the Dhamma, Swakato, Bhagavata, Dhammo, Sandittiko, Akaliko, you are explaining the qualities of Dhamma in this man. Well established this Dhamma. Well declared this Dhamma. There is no any arguments about the Dhamma. You might heard from others in, about so many things in this world. They have so many arguments, they have so many debates about such and such a things, but no one yet able to say anything against the teachings of the Buddha, but some of them who don't know the Dhamma, what the, what the, what the meaning of the teachings of the Buddha, without knowing they have so many explanations, but no one can get, no one can accept those kind of uh, views because they don't know Dhamma. Who don't know the Dhamma, then how they can say anything about the Dhamma, the teachings of the Buddha. But who knows Dhamma? Who knows the teachings of the Buddha? No one can say this is wrong. This is wrong. This is the uniqueness of the Dhamma, teachings of the Buddha. Swakhato delivered well. Beginning, middle and end in these stages completely covered. Based on one thing, the Buddha had to start the sermon, Buddha had to maintain and Buddha had finished that sermon with maintaining one goal. What is that goal? Nibbana, for noble truths. Whatever the discourse we have, among these 84,000 discourses, sermons, everything based on Four Noble Truths. Whatever the discourses explain the path, Noble Eightfold Path, that's it. There is nothing. Taking Karaniya Metta Sutta, Metta Sutta, loving discourse of loving prejudice, Ratana Sutta, Vyagapajya Sutta, uh, any other discourses that we are using in our daily routines, daily practicing, explain for noble truth and noble late pole path. That's it. So all these teachings are based on for noble truth, noble late pole path, and dependent origination. These are the unique teachings of the Buddha. But there are some sim similarity with other teachings when you're taking part by part. Likewise, 
taking a blessing this course mahamangala sutta asevana cha balanam pandita nanti sevana don't associate foolish associate wise this one is similar with so many other scholars explanations so many other religious leaders explanation is similar there's no difference but that is the meaning that they can get just outside external but when you go to deeper level what does it mean what is that foolishness means foolishness means ignorance what is that mean ignorance mean not knowing the reality then the reality and reality these two difference the reality already established law in this universe the reality is not changing because of anything what is the reality the reality is in permanent suffering selfless this is the reality is any other religious leader or any other scholar philosopher had given anything about these three things in permanent suffering selfless only the physician physics specialist have been talking about impermanence but not like buddhist buddhist buddha teaching not like that much deep they just talking about the changes everything changing they have that thoughts particularly in their uh relativity theory and uh, in their quantum theory they explain in this this change they believe it they accept it is there any other religious leaders or any other philosophers any other scholars is able to tell anything about this nature now you can see the meaning outside foolishness and the meaning the take according to the buddha's teaching how difference how difference is huge gap is there so now you can see we are able to listen to this path we are able to get some uh, guidance to think to develop our thinking ability because of buddha the teachings of the buddha now you can see why in here mention sukho buddha nan utpado happy is the birth of buddhas why because our human goals are there with the buddha's birth the birth of the buddha's means not the birth of the prince siddhartha the buddha birth happened under the bo tree attaining enlightenment himself this one of the truth was covered by defilements no one was able to think about to recognize about these defilements but attaining enlightenment the buddha was able to see things as they are they he was able to realize the four noble truths he apply noble eight pole path to re- for that realization so in this manner now you can see because of his great achievement the buddha was given lectures and teachings for benefits for ourselves to clarify our mind to develop our insight to attain enlightenment for our own liberation now it it might be clear for everybody why the meaning what is the meaning the birth of the buddha is happy to say that say so now we know the meaning the second one is happy is the teachings of the sublime dhamma 
happiness is arising, teachings of the sublime Dhamma. What does it mean? Sublime Dhamma means a universal, established law. That is the Dhamma. It is based on noble eightfold path for noble truths and dependent origination. These are the main teachings where in this sublime Dhamma. That sublime Dhamma is not different because of the country, not because of the ethnic group, ethnic, ethnicity, or any other things. Sublime Dhamma is already established law. According to Anguttara Nikaya, Dhamma, Dhamma Niyamata Sutta, the Buddha appears in this world or not, this established Dhamma is here. Is here. It's not changing. It's not changing. So it is also very peaceful, happy things for our life. But we can hear sublime Dhamma because the birth of the Buddha. If we don't have Buddha, then also we are also living as a blind people, deaf people. Because we don't hear, we, we can't hear Dhamma without the Buddha. In the previous, in one of previous life of the Buddha, practicing as a Bodhisattva, in one particular birth, he wanted to listen to Dhamma. The Bodhisattva was a king. He sent a messenger around his kingdom to find someone to listen to Dhamma. Finally, he said, if someone able to give a, uh, one instance of Dhamma, I'm ready to offer my kinship, my kingdom to him. But no one was there. Finally, the Sakra came to human world and then appearing as a devil, he, he, he wanted to check the Bodhisattva. Okay, I will give a Dhamma sermon for you, what you can give for me. Then the Bodhisattva said, I can give, I can give whatever you wanted. Then the devil said, I am not a human being, I am a devil. I don't want to have anything that you have in here. So I like to eat something. What do you like to eat? I like to eat you. If you're ready to donate your physical body, then I like to, I am ready to give deliver Dhamma sermon for you. Then the Bodhisattva said, yes. I'm ready to do that. I'm ready to sacrifice my life if you are ready to give a Dhamma servant for me. He did that. He did that means uh, the Sakra using his magic power create a mountain and then ask to Bodhisattva to climb up to that uh, mountain and jump into his mouth between that time period, when he start to jump from top of mountain to his mouth, during that time he was able to give a Dhamma talk. This is the way how the Bodhisattva was enhanced. He was enhanced in his knowledge, Dhamma knowledge, during that period. So now you can see, listening. Sublime Dhamma is very rare thing because of the Buddha we are able to listen to Dhamma. Happy is the unity of the Sangha. Sangha means bhikkhu, bhikkhuni, upasaka, upasika. Whoever following the teachings of the Buddha, they belong to that category Sangha. That category Sangha. So, who are applying the teachings of the Buddha for their day-to-day -day life, they should live 
unity, happily, and harmony, these are very important qualities that they should maintain. Why? If they have squirrels, arguments, and uh, uh, debates, so unnecessary thing, they just wasted their time. Therefore, happy is the unity of the Sangha. If you are living harmony, peacefully, happily, it is very helpful to realize the Dhamma and spread the Dhamma. Happy is the disciplines of the united ones and as well as the Sangha, when they united, they should, mean, they should have discipline. Mental discipline and physical discipline, both. When they are living in this, with this, these qualities, they can spread this Dhamma, they can realize their self and they can spread this Dhamma benefits for others. When you have some good qualities, likewise, compassion, loving friendliness, how would be your house? Full of happy, full of happiness. Calm, serene, nature would be there. Naturally, your house become a very comfortable, peaceful place, not physical environment. Non-physical environment would be peaceful, happy. When you are living there, you don't feel any uncomfortableness there. You are living there comfortably. Whoever come into that place, your, your, your dwelling place, they are also happy to live there. They also have some kind of uh, attachment to that place, not for the physical things, not for the materials. Non-material environment is very helpful for everybody who are visiting your place. It's the nature, it's the blessings of Dhamma. It's happening. When you go to meditation hall, where the people are practicing meditation, completely feelings are different there. Their feelings are completely different. You can think about yourself with your experiences. You can think with your experience. If you don't have that experience, next time when you visit, any meditation hall, meditation place where they are meditating, try to think about that experience. So this is the way now we can see where, how happiness is arising in our mind. Buddha's birth is happy. It is the greatest things for our life. And having chance to learn to listen to sublime Dhamma, it is also cause for happiness. And unity of Sangha, it is also cause for happiness. Discipline of that uh, united ones, Sangha, it is also cause for our happiness. So now you can see how we can gain happiness ourselves. All these facts are helpful to gain our happiness. So we have all these opportunities now. So we are not supposed to waste our time. Let us practice Dhamma to gain happiness and establish our happiness. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Let us use this opportunity to share merits with others. First of all, think about departed relatives, friends, family members, and pets who departed name of us, by the power of these merits and metta powers, may they all be well, happy and peaceful. May they be able to get rid of their sansaric journey to attain in enlightenment, having that aspiration, share merits with those departed, uh, departed ones, saying, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Whoever is affected COVID-19 and any other sicknesses, by the power of these merits and metta powers, May they all be well, happy, and peaceful. May they be able to get rid of their suffering and pain. May they recover soon, having that aspiration, metta thoughts, keeping metta thoughts in your mind. Make blessings upon them, saying, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. 
May you all be well, happy, and peaceful. All your wishes come true by the power of this merit and methods. May we all be able to attain ultimate bliss of Nibbana, having that aspiration, say, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. By means of these meritorious deeds, may I never join with the police. May I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the highest realms of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms with form and without form with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you.